I have one more thing from Breer's presser I want to get to. Okay. It's Sealski's question about roster building. Did you want to get to anything else before that? No, let's do that because okay. I, I got the sense that that did not go over well on Twitter, and I knew it was not going to go over well with you. Yeah, I wasn't following along on Twitter. Yeah. Um, I watched the broadcast on Twitter, but I was doing a bunch of stuff today uh, and just kind of was listening to They're it. just – they're – there are comments that I hear like when a coach or a player or a GM says it and I just like wince because I think to myself, ooh, people aren't going to like that one. So Sealski asked about roster building and it was like, you know, how many of the great player and Danny jokes like, you know, 20. I want 20 guys like Mishkov. And he's like, uh, yes, you want as many great players right. as possible. But as we've said – like, unless some of the dudes they already have take major steps, it doesn't seem as if it's going to be very easy to acquire the high-end talent we so badly want. Right. And Danny was like, yeah, we're probably not going to have another first overall pick. And my question was, when was, when the, was first the first one? When was the first one? Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought that too. <laughs> but but uh, he just kind of starts talking like, you know, there's multiple ways. And he goes into the tanking and the luck you need. I found it very funny that he referenced, well, even if you do the tank and you, you get the high picks, then you, you need to do it. You need to be lucky enough to do it in years when the players are really good. And he's and that, right. And he's right. And that's why you do it for like four or five years. Um, you know, yeah, you get one Nolan Patrick and give up. Like, it's probably not enough. That's why you need to do it consistently. Right. But they have chosen not to. And good, because I'm probably going to get to cover playoff games this year, and that's fun. Uh, but <laughs> I don't think our viewership would be quite as high if they were destined to finish in the bottom four. Yeah, uh, probably not. Probably not. Um, so he, he's going into the different ways it can be done, and he references the Blues. And they were not that, a team. That was when I went. They were not a team with high end talent, superstars. Like Petrangelo is probably a star, and he is. He also won in Vegas. Like he's an excellent defenseman. Yeah, great defenseman. Um, Especially then when he was yeah, truly in his prime. Yes. Um, yeah, like that's his what? Free, that might have been his walk year when they won. Like that was, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, good for him. But. Like Tarasenko, and Tarasenko wasn't, you know, the Sank show at that point. He was good, but yeah. he wasn't that guy. He wasn't peak Tarasenko yeah. anymore, but he was still very it good. It was just, it was a good deep team. It was not a special team like Colorado or Tampa Bay. That was the point. Danny has told us the goal is not to make the playoffs. The goal is to regularly compete for Stanley Cups. And I know you can't win the Cup every year. Going on runs every year is very hard. The playoffs are insane. It's really tough to repeat. Like, yeah. you get hurt real bad. Yeah. You know, Florida just started last season with, like, none of their guys. It was a miracle they got to where they did. Yeah. But the Blues are, like, the exact opposite of the team <laughs> that Danny has told us they are trying to build. Um, 2018, missed playoffs. 2019, won cup. 2020 lost first round 2021 lost first round 2022 lost second round okay. 2023 missed playoffs 2024 missed playoffs if this is the go-to example you're looking at an aberration team like that this yeah. is clearly yeah. the team that got lucky they came into the wells fargo center in what january or february in last place in the league yeah. jordan bennington shut out the flyers and then they went nuts he was amazing for the rest of the regular season he was pretty good in the playoffs and then they all just kind of came together yeah yeah i would take a cup if danny briere had run on the ice in June and snatch the cup away from Barkov. I'd be like, yeah, we won. Time for a parade. I will take a cup any way it comes. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's really difficult to do this. And if you're just trying to be the team that gets lucky, that seems even harder. No, it, it, it's it's functionally, you know what it's kind of like? It's maybe not quite this far, but it's kind of like this. It's kind of like if you were interviewing a general manager of a, of an NFL team and they were like, well, what's your model? You know, what's the model to, to win a Super Bowl? And they were like, the 2017-2018 the Philadelphia Eagles. Like, so your model is get lucky. Get hell. lucky and have a backup quarterback, have the greatest playoff run a backup quarterback has ever had. Like, no, that's not a model. Like, it's awesome that it happened, yes. and it was truly life-changing for me to watch. <laughs> but, like, part of the reason why it was so life-changing was because it, it never so should have happened improbable <laughs> it was wildly improbable like not only did they lose the quarterback it was like five or six starters until anyway yeah yes that's very much what it's like like oh but they beat the patriots yes and the patriots won nine yeah <laughs> like, there's there's a difference here yeah. they beat them that day yeah. they won 
all the time. And that's what I thought we were going for. And again, dynasty is near impossible to do, especially in a cap. But sport. I don't think you're you're looking for but a it's dynasty. Not even dynasty. You, it's you're, just yeah. the opportunity to win for a five to eight yes. year stretch, and hopefully you get one. And if yes. you're lucky, is all hell too. That that's the thing. The way that you build a what I would consider to be a true consistent cup contender is you put together a team where you get five, six, seven shots at it, where for a half decade, you are one of the six best teams in the league, true talent wise. Yeah. And look, a lot of times you're not going to win, but if you it give, happens. if you give yourself five, six, seven bites of the apple, eventually you're hoping that you get that one year where the vibes are great and everybody stays healthy and your best players have the best year and your goalie isn't cold when the playoffs start. Like, that's how you do it. You have to give yourself a lot of chances because if you only give yourself one chance, like, th that ultimately is what the Hextall era produced. The Hextall era produced one chance. 2020. One chance. And... Is there a world maybe where there isn't a global pandemic and they ride the vibes and they win the, the, the Stanley Cup? Yes, that maybe happened in some parallel universe. The problem was is that was the Hextall one? rebuild, retool, whatever you want to call it, it produced one team that had a chance. And that's nowhere near enough because everything has to break your way. And of course, because it's the Flyers, nothing broke their way. Like literally the world shut down. But they should have been able to build a team that gave themselves three, four, five chances. Instead, they built a team that gave themselves one, and they didn't do it, and then it fell apart. This is just personally advice for Danny. Take it or leave it. Um, you know, you're the GM of the team, but maybe listen. At least reference Vegas. Um, three yeah. trips to the Final Four in yeah. six years, and they come away with a cup. Yeah. They traded for Eichel, traded for Stone. Things you might have to do. Uh, not a ton. Not a ton of high draft pedigree guys. Um, Aiden Hill put up a 932 in those playoffs, despite only making 88 career regular season starts in six seasons before that. Before those playoffs started. If you're gonna be this, okay, there's another way to do it, team. Yeah. Yeah. Reference the team that did it consistently. That's all. I think the reason why they all hesitate to use Vegas is because of the weirdness of the expansion. They but all blame this expansion. They, they draft do. They, and they do. don't blame themselves. They do. But I 100% agree with you in that if you're looking at two teams that both did it without the, you know, McKinnon, McDavid level yes. superstar, Vegas to me, number one, because they stayed very competitive for longer. You know, it wasn't just the Blues where they had one or two years where they were a true talent top five team, and then they got it done one of those years. The Vegas Golden Knights have been a true talent top six to eight team for over half a decade. Like, they have been. They, they've been real good. So that's number one. Number two is just the fact that I want, like, if this is going to work without them having the ability to draft at the top of the draft in multiple years— I don't think the, the the better path is, well, let's just collect a bunch of good players and then have them coalesce into this amazing unified team. It's going to be, let's get aggressive in the trade and free agent markets and go out and get really good players like Vegas did. Yeah, and they're going to have to do that at some point. And, and I, I think they know that. But I will. This is why I winced when I heard the Blues. Because whenever, whenever a Flyers general manager or an owner or a chairman or whatever says the St. Louis Blues, all I hear in my head is, "So you're not going to go after stars." That's all I hear. Whereas if you say Vegas, that tells me, "Oh, you're going to be aggressive, and this is going to be real fun." That's the, like <laughs> they've made so many moves, not just with the personnel, like the coaches, the GMs. They've done whatever it takes, and they should be the model. Like, yeah, they went out and got Eichel. They went out and got Petrangelo. Like, you needed to make these moves, but uh, like the Flyers won't even have to do. Hell, the Panthers. Yeah, you. Yeah, use the Panthers. Like the Panthers are a great. I guess the, the the thing with the Panthers though is they did have that core of the top ten pick. Guys. It's just it, it just took so a while ago. Yeah, it took yeah, a while like, it was, to build around. It's been a long time yeah. since that happened, and honestly. 
Colorado kind of, I was listening to, I think it was Eric Johnson on Flyers Daily um, talk about like how it went down in Colorado. And it's like, we think of them as like that fun young team that won the cup. And it's like, you know how long ago they drafted Gabe Landeskog? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. How, it, it was, was the Couturier draft. Yeah. It was five years after they drafted Bacar that they won the cup. Yeah. Like, it takes a while. Yeah. So uh, I just. And they only. <laughs> just they, stop referencing the Blues. They only got Makar because they. They, <laughs> they were furious. They, they dumped one of the guys who they thought was going to be originally part of the Corps and Duchesne. Yeah. And they were furious when they lost that lottery. Yeah. They were horrible that year, and they end up with the fourth pick. Yeah, well, and Duchesne was, was won the guns. But seriously, like, and, and that was that was the one really bad year when they got McCarr. Yeah. But no point being is that yeah, it took Colorado some time, but they still did have yeah. the the top line. But I just reference Vegas. Do me a favor. Yeah. The team that's consistently good, not the team that got lucky once, and, I, and it's. Do you think they'd reference the Blues as much as they did if it wasn't Craig Berube? You brought that up before the show, and I do wonder if that plays into it because they— He's so, everyone's buddy. They so view Berube as, like, he's a culture guy. You know, he—they won. The Blues won, at least in the way the Flyers and a lot of people around hockey tell themselves. They won because of the culture. And Berube is a guy steeped in Philadelphia Flyers culture. So they almost look at it as— like that is an endorsement of our way because Baruby is basically a fly. If it wasn't for that bastard Ron Hextall, who's no longer a flyer, <laughs> and bringing in that loser Dave Hextall because their names sounded alike, <laughs> like, that's how they. And think. he coached his kid in yeah. college. I really think like that's the like they are retroactively being like, oh no, actually Baruby was the coach for this team. But Hextall ruined it because he was listening to uh, analytics or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, I think that's probably it from the brief. And I don't I, I really don't like doing a negative show today. I know it took that turn. I just but there were just some answers that I was like, the, what, the, what the are blues, we doing here, Danny? The blues thing is tough. It's tough to hear because it, it all it really all just goes back to the high end talent thing. Because Everybody has been pushing like you need high in talent. Okay, well you got we got Mishkov. Who else do they have? Uh, well, we'll see. You know, like uh, no, gnomes, <laughs> underpants, South Park, <laughs> like like step step two profit, like that sort of yeah. thing. It's like, well, we need to get high in talent. Well, how are you going to get it? Ah, uh, we'll get it. When you hear them compare themselves to the Blues, you do wonder: is the plan really just never to get it? And just be like, well, we got Mishkov, and then the rest of it's going to be if, Mishkov and Vibes. If Ryan O'Reilly has that one year, like, yeah. well, what if he doesn't? What if he doesn't? We all silly like the mayor.